Ever heard of arterial calcification? It is basically the hardening of your arteries due to calcium buildup, which can seriously increase your risk of developing heart disease. Studies show that nearly one in six people have some degree of this by their 40s, and it gets more common as people age. But there's good news! Vitamin K2 might help prevent or even reverse this process. It plays a key role in directing calcium to your bones and teeth where it's needed to keep them strong and resilient and keep it out of your arteries. In fact, one study suggests that vitamin K2 can reduce your risk of dying from heart disease by as much as 57%. But unfortunately, a majority of healthy adults, women, and even children don't take enough vitamin K2 in their diets, and even if you're taking K2, you might not be doing it right. In this video, let's explore some common mistakes to avoid when taking vitamin K2 and see how to maximize its benefits for your heart health. Let's begin. Number 1. Choosing the right dose Many people get confused when it comes to K2 dosage, and there are two main reasons why. First, they might mix up K1 and K2. So, let's first clear this up. Vitamin K comes in two forms, K1 and K2. K1 is found in leafy greens and helps your blood form clots in case of an injury. On the other hand, K2 is the key player for your heart and bone health and it has two main subtypes, MK4 and MK7. MK4 is primarily found in animal and dairy products like liver meats, egg yolks, and cheddar cheese. It gets easily absorbed quickly by your body but has a shorter lifespan in your system, lasting just around 1-2 to two hours. MK7, on the other hand, is found in fermented foods like natto and some types of fermented cheeses. It can stay in your system for 24 to 72 hours, allowing it to be more effective at reaching tissues beyond the liver, such as bones and arteries, where it can exert its beneficial effects. The recommended daily intake of vitamin K2 for adults is 90 to 110 micrograms for women and 90 to 120 micrograms for men including both MK4 and MK7. So both the dose and type of vitamin K2 matters. Since MK4 leaves your body faster, you might need a higher daily dose compared to MK7. Number 2. Taking vitamin K2 without prescription Many people focus solely on how much K2 to take and forget the key step of getting tested for a deficiency before starting supplementation. As mentioned before, the recommended daily intake for most adults is 90 to 120 micrograms of K2, but that's a general guideline. Your individual needs may vary depending on your health and lifestyle. Having too much of it can cause blood clots, while its deficiency can cause internal bleeding or slow wound healing. So, don't self-diagnose. Talk to your doctor. They can test for a K2 deficiency and determine which supplements are right for you along with the appropriate dosage based on your individual needs. Number 3. Taking vitamin K2 with certain medications K2 can be a valuable addition to your health routine, but be aware of potential interactions with certain medications or health conditions. First up, ask your doctor before taking K2 if you take blood thinners like warfarin. These medications work by reducing clotting factors in your liver. Since K2 activates these factors, taking them together may counteract the blood thinning effect. This can lead to dangerous blood clots even while you're on medication, potentially increasing your risk of having a stroke or a heart attack. Second, if you have diabetes, some studies suggest K2 may also affect blood sugar control. K2 can influence how your body uses insulin, which regulates blood sugar. If you take diabetes medications that increase insulin sensitivity, K2 supplements could potentially cause very low blood sugar levels. People with severe kidney disease may struggle to process K2, so they may need to avoid K2 supplements altogether, as it can cause severe complications. Plus, if you have high blood pressure or naturally high blood volume, high doses of K2 supplements could further worsen these conditions by potentially thickening your blood. Number 4. Taking vitamin K2 from supplements rather than foods K2 supplements are an option, but clinical trials suggest that K2 from food might be more effective for your body. There are two reasons for this. First, K2 from food comes in a form that your body can absorb and use more readily. Supplements might not always deliver K2 in this perfect form. Second, 
your body naturally produces some K2 in your gut. When you eat K2-rich foods, it works together with this gut-produced K2 for potentially better overall health benefits. So, instead of reaching for pills, incorporate K2-containing foods into your diet. Some of these foods include natto, a fermented soybean dish, beef liver, chicken liver, egg yolks, and fermented vegetables like sauerkraut and kimchi. To enhance their health benefits even further, consume these K2-rich foods with healthy fats like avocado, olive oil, or nuts. K2 is fat-soluble, so these healthy fats can further enhance your body's ability to absorb, store, and process K2. Number 5. Taking too much vitamin K2 from foods and supplements Firstly, as mentioned before, K2 plays a role in blood clotting. Very high K2 levels can potentially increase blood thickness or interact with blood-thinning medications, which can raise the risk of blood clots. Secondly, high doses of K2 supplements might cause diarrhea, nausea, and stomach cramps. This could be because high concentrations irritate your stomach and intestines, or your body struggles to absorb it all properly. Number 6. Not taking enough vitamin D with K2 when it comes to maintaining strong and healthy bones, vitamin D and K2 work together in a powerful synergy. While they each have distinct functions, their combined effects create a beneficial environment for optimal bone health. Vitamin D promotes calcium absorption within your intestines. It essentially acts as a facilitator, allowing your body to efficiently utilize calcium from your diet. This calcium then circulates in the bloodstream, ready to be directed to the areas where it's needed most. There, vitamin K2 comes into play by activating specific proteins in your body. These proteins bind with calcium so that it can stick to your bones and teeth, where it's supposed to be stored and enhance bone strength. This is also important for preventing arterial calcification, as mentioned before. So, if you're taking vitamin D and not vitamin K2, you might end up having too much calcium in your arteries, which can be dangerous. And if you're taking vitamin K2 and not vitamin D? Well, it might not be too dangerous. Most of the calcium from your diet might go to waste, so you might not get the bone-strengthening benefits you wanted. Vitamin D itself has a key importance in overall health. Without enough of it, you might feel tired all the time, even after getting sleep. You may also feel muscle weakness and pain and bone and back pain. Some studies even suggest a link between low vitamin D levels and mood disorders like depression. Vitamin D deficiency is also associated with hair loss and slow wound healing. So even if bone health or arterial calcification is not your concern right now, be sure to get enough vitamin D from sunlight, diet, or supplements. To optimize bone health, consider a combined vitamin D3 and K2 supplement. Many health experts suggest taking 100 to 200 micrograms of vitamin K2 in the form of MK7 and 1,000 to 5,000 international units of vitamin D3 if you're specifically targeting bone health. But be sure to consult your doctor for a personalized dose according to your individual needs and health condition. For taking vitamin D naturally, you can have fatty fish, egg yolks, and vitamin D fortified milk and cereals. Number 7 not taking vitamin K2 and D3 at the right times. There are two key factors to consider when taking K2 supplements to ensure optimal benefits. Fat intake and timing in relation to vitamin D3. Firstly, vitamin K2 is fat-soluble. This means your body absorbs it best when taken alongside a meal containing healthy fats. These fats act as little transporters, helping K2 get where it needs to go in your body. So, it's best if you take your K2 supplement when you take your healthy fat meal, preferably dinner. As for vitamin D, many health experts recommend taking D3 supplements in the morning to mimic natural sunlight exposure. This can help regulate your circadian rhythm and your sleep cycle. So, for better absorption and utilization of both vitamins, take vitamin D in the morning and vitamin K2 at night. Please note that this video is for educational purposes only and is not intended as a substitute for professional medical advice. Always consult your doctor for proper diagnosis and treatment of your condition and to get personalized recommendations according to your individual needs and health condition. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel to support our mission to help improve your health.
Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.